Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel, this edition Stop Stories. The world of apiculture hailed as a path to innovation in the agriculture sector. The Department of Education calls on society to protect the nation's children and the Parliament to meet Tuesday to authorize, among other things, financing for COVID-19 response projects. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives Honorable Ezekiel Joseph says efforts at diversifying the agriculture industry include creating a vibrant apiculture that incorporates the value-added chain of agro-processing. Honorable Joseph shared the plan as the Global Environment Facility pledged its support to these efforts. The Global Environment Facility Jeff Small Grants Program, UNDP, at the opening ceremony of its 2020-2021 Knowledge Fair and the UE Open Campus Country Conference, disclosed that its focus for the next four years would be geared towards upscaling in three key areas. One such area is that of apiculture. The goal is to increase production to include value-added products and gain economies of scale. The Jeff, between October 2012 and December 2019, invested in 12 apiculture projects to the tune of 1.22 million EC dollars in St. Lucia. Agriculture Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph explained the government's intention to make apiculture a full-fledged industry. He noted, however, that it is not without its challenges. Apiculture in St. Lucia has tremendous potential and it has been reported that the demand for products is greater than supply. In addition to the work that has been done with the assistance from the small grant program, my government has retrofitted a sec sector of the Inland Reception and Distribution Center, IRDC, in Lakai, Denry and purchase equipment for that facility. This would assist with the processing and packaging of honey. And of course, this is going to result in a sustainable supply and consistency in quality. There are still many challenges in this subsector. For example, honey production is seasonal. The size of our production units are very small. The, the level of fragmentation within the sector is affecting it. And there is a need for improved technology. Managing our pests and disease is critical. And of course, managing the impact of climate change must be given serious consideration. Richard Mathias, president of Ionola Apiculture Collective, highlighted the variety of products that can be produced from apiculture. Mathias indicated that some products include beeswax for use in cosmetics, scented candles, propolis, and more, which he explained can fetch a hefty price on the international market. This four grams of apitoxin, raw apitoxin, unprocessed, is worth about 380 US, 380 EC dollars. All right. If we process it, we'll probably be looking at about 150 US dollars per gram. All right. And that's just took me one hour to collect, well, just over an hour to collect this. So we are now diversified our portfolio of products so that we are no longer reliant on this product. So if, we, if there is no honey, we probably make more money selling all these other products than depending, deprive, well, not even depending, depriving the bees of their food which they store for them to get them through the season. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabert, encouraged St. Lucians to lead the charge developing innovations for a sustainable future. So our nation needs to assume its rightful place and do more to inform the science of today which is an important precursor to tomorrow's science and the outputs therefrom, creating new bodies of knowledge. Our curiosity and actions need to provoke answers to the questions that beset us. But where are the scientists, inventors, 
and innovators of today? Where are the novel and groundbreaking luminaries of St. Lucia leading the way in all of the sciences? They are here in this room and following on social media. And therefore, today we set a sail on a five-month journey of deliberate actions for research and innovation. The opening ceremony was held on a Sunday, 22nd November 2020. The Bankers Association of St. Lucia has made another significant donation of learning devices to various schools across the island. The initiative was the culmination of the financial group's charitable and educational activities for Financial Information Month. We have more in this report from Homa DeMarc. Students and parents from 24 secondary schools across the island gathered at Serenity Park to receive brand new laptops. The Bankers Association of St. Lucia collaborated with the Ministry of Education in identifying and supplying students in need of the devices to help better facilitate virtual education in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the PRO of the association, Gordon Julian, out of the numerous donations during the month of October, the donation was in fact the group's signature event. We are well aware that with COVID-19, it has exposed the vulnerabilities in among us in terms of persons inability to access online studies online schooling because of the absence of the relevant tools to do so so the bankers association of saint lucia as we bring the curtains down on financial information month 2020 we thought it was very important as part of our signature project to do something that is impactful, something that is significant, and something that is long-lasting. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Meyer was present at the ceremony along with other officials from the ministry. The officials thanked the Bankers Association for its contribution to the education of the nation's children and encouraged students to make the best use of the devices. It is unfortunate that negative news is so much more important than positive news. Today, I want you to stand tall and to say that I want my face to be shown. I want to appreciate what's happening here. I want to be on television receiving a resource that is not only for fun, it is going to help me ensure that I can meaningfully contribute to myself and to my family. Parents lauded the commitment of the bankers to their corporate social responsibility. I would just like to say thank you to the Bankers Association for this worthy distribution of computers to the students. And I know each student here is going to put it into very good use. Though this donation was the culmination of activities for Financial Information Month, officials from the Bankers Association of St. Lucia says it will not be their last. The collective group of financial institutions will continue to work together to give back to the people and communities it serves. From the Government Information Service, Hamadi Mark reporting. The Ministry of Education is commemorating World Children's Day observed on Friday 20th November with an important message. Chief Education Officer with the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, is encouraging St. Lucians to start to see children as a valuable part of our society. Our children are people. Our children have a voice. As adults, we continue to make decisions for them. And sometimes we do not take enough time to listen to them, to ensure that what they have to say is taken into account. So this is an appeal to listen. This is an appeal to engage. This is an appeal to applaud our children. And while I do that, I must applaud the parents, the educators, the community activists, the people who are on the ground really, really supporting children and making sure that they feel a valued part of, of, the, nation's, of the nation's society. So for me, in the capacity of Chief Education Officer, I've had to deal with situations of late, two very specific ones involving our students who were hurt in two separate incidents, two of our boys, unfortunately. And at every juncture, it speaks to, you know, how can we be more empathetic, more caring, more loving, more encouraging, more positive 
to our children because sometimes it is really that they go through a lot of their pains and hurts and we may not always reach them as educators but if we do it collectively our parents our community activists together with educators that triangle can be can be so strong so for us we wish all our children happy international children's day we wish you were with us at school but you're not what we want to encourage parents take some time take some time to really show our children that they're valued that they matter and so it is to say to us you know this too shall pass the pandemic will be over at some point but in the meantime let us manage effectively let us deal with it well so that our children come out of it even more resilient they can persevere and they can also problem solve when there is a situation so dear parents help us in wishing our children happy international children's day as we continue as an education system to really look out and to try our best to make sure that no one falls through the cracks. Dr. Meyer says she has to deal with incidents where children are hurt. These situations, Dr. Meyer notes, speak to the need for more empathy, love, care and encouragement when dealing with children. Because sometimes it is really that they go through a lot of their pains and hurts and we may not always reach them as educators, but if we do it collectively, our parents, our community activists, together with educators, that triangle can be, can be so strong. So for us, we wish all our children happy International Children's Day. We wish you were with us at school, but you're not. What we want to encourage parents, take some time. Take some time to really show our children that they're valued, that they matter, and so it is to say to us, you know, this too shall pass. Dr. Maya says although school is currently restricted to online learning due to COVID-19, the pandemic will soon come to an end. She says with effective management of the situation, children can become more resilient, learn perseverance and problem solving skills. The general public is being encouraged to continue adhering to the COVID-19 protocols in order to protect and save lives. The urging comes as the Ministry of Health confirmed more than 220 negative tests on the weekend. On Friday, November 20, 2020, a batch of 105 negative test results were received. On Saturday, November 21, a total of 160 negative test results were received. In accordance with the Ministry of Health's protocol, all individuals who have negative test results are also contacted to be informed of the results. On Sunday, November 22, 16 new positive cases were recorded, taking the total number of active COVID-19 cases to 119. A sitting of the House of Assembly is scheduled for Tuesday, November 24, 2020, with papers to be laid by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, the Honorable Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, the Honorable Minister for Commerce, Industry, Enterprise, Development and Consumer Affairs, and the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives. Motions for consideration include the authorization by Parliament for the Attorney General to make an order to declare that the 2017 supplement to the revised edition of the laws of St. Lucia, as specified in the order, shall come into force on such date as may be appointed by such order as an authoritative version of the law. Also, that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to obtain financing from the Export-Import Bank of Taiwan for the purpose of financing the COVID-19 response project. The following bills are down for consideration. Public Finance Management, Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Amendment and Credit Reporting. Tuesday's sitting is scheduled to commence at 10 a.m. The sitting of Senate is scheduled for Thursday, November 26, 2020 at 10 a.m. In keeping with the protocols established by the authorities for management of the coronavirus crisis and with a view of ensuring that there are established protocols, members of the public will not be allowed in the chamber gallery during the sittings. 
Kindly note that the public can view the live proceedings on the National Television Network, NTN, Channel 122, Government of St. Lucia Facebook and YouTube. And this is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of LPG 100 pound cylinder has changed. The retail price of gasoline, kerosene, diesel, LPG 20 and 22 pound cylinder remains unchanged. The price change takes effect from Monday, November 23, 2020. Gasoline remains unchanged at $12.13 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $5.62 per gallon. Diesel is also unchanged at $10.61 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder remains unchanged at $27.78. The 22-pound cylinder stays fixed at $30.55 and the 100-pound cylinder increased from $163.61 to $164.67. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, December 14, 2020. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.